What's the crack? Today we are going to be talking about this album right here, The Drug In Me Is You by Falling In Reverse. I wanted to talk about this because they uh, recently got this milestone, Falling In Reverse, where this album went gold and it has been out since, what, 2011, something like that. And it's one of the first post-hardcore albums that I ever really got into. When it arrived, I was a little bit scared. Um, first of all, like, obviously it's just the vinyl. You don't have to have everything be super special. But this was supposed to be special, or they made it seem that way on uh, the website, on social media and everything. They were like, this went gold. We're putting this on a gold album. And, uh, you know, it showed up and it's like, it's not gold. And it's like this color, which is like not exactly gold, and you know the front of it is faded a little bit. Like the like the cover has really bold blacks and pinks and purples and all that, and the actual like vinyl has this faded kind of black on it that doesn't really look that bold or beautiful and. I don't know, I, I got it, and then there was like a, it, it was only a small aesthetic thing, but there's like this tiny rip in the side of the packaging here, I was like, and the side of the vinyl is kind of sharp, you know, which none of my vinyls are like that, it might just be because they're more worn in, and this is the first new record that I have, but anyway, all of that ranting aside, everything else is good that I have to say about it. Let's play a game, okay? The game is that for every single, uh, member change there is, you have to take a shot. So, you'll be dead in about five minutes, that'll be great. And one thing that I found very interesting, very, very interesting, was you will see here in the liner notes that it says, vocals, Ronnie Radke, lead guitar, Jackie Vincent, bass, Micah Horiuchi, guitar, Derek Jones, drums, Ryan Seaman. And it's very interesting that that comes up on the album right there, because you know, obviously, no one's in the band anymore. It's it's Ronnie and Derek is still there, I think. Or maybe he's not. Ow. I mean, he's so quiet all the time, you never know. Ryan Seaman, credited as band member, does not perform on album. The whole thing was performed by uh, this guy, Scott Gee. Drums and percussion. Wasn't put on the album, but Ryan had to learn. Like, I, I, I always thought that Ryan recorded all this stuff. And he's just a great drummer. I mean, th that's a shame that he wasn't on, like, the album that most people consider the best Falling in Reverse album. And the same with Micah as well, I mean, the guy didn't really do much, he basically left the day the fucking album came out. He was in, like, two music videos and then gone, so... I mean, I'm, I'm more sad about the fact that Ryan didn't perform than I am about Micah not performing, but I mean, what can you do? No, nothing you can do about that. I mean, uh, you know, considering now what we know, Scott Gee did a great job performing drums and Nathan Schoffler did a great job performing bass. Yeah, and apparently Omar Espinosa was on this album. I didn't know that. Or, well, he, he wrote, like, Goodbye Graceful and Don't Mess With Ouija Boards. So Omar Espinosa wrote two of the heavy songs on it, which is just weird, because Omar doesn't do much anymore. Or does he? Does he do anything now? He's He works in a studio. That's fine. As it turns out, two of the five people here on the cover were not actually on the album, which is like, kind of weird. Like, I don't know how to react to that. That's like, I don't know any video editing tricks. You're just gonna have to pretend that I, I'm really good at video editing and just made a massive show up on the screen. Thanks, appreciate it. But yeah, let's talk about some of the differences between the vinyl and the CD version that I'm used to listening to, or YouTube, Spotify, whatever, you know? Um, vinyl is supposed to sound a whole lot different, so I just wanted to give a, a few opinions thrown in, okay? Okay. So, for the drums, there's not much of a difference. Um, it may be a bit more noticeable that there's samples on top of the drum sounds, because it's kind of, you know, vinyl in general has less low end than CDs would, and you know, you'll notice that a lot, but it, it, it's kind of got this, like, slappy feel. Like, it sounds... It, it, you Listen to it and you'll get what I mean. It sounds a little bit slappy. Like, everything sounds a little bit like bass guitar, on the other hand, is more audible to me. 
uh, this is going to be a common theme with uh, the rest of the instruments is that there's less compression on vinyl uh, so everything is kind of just a little bit clearer there's a little bit more open space and um, you know the the bass is uh, a lot more audible as a result because everything isn't squashed together so much you know uh, the kick drum isn't covering up so much of the bass there isn't so much low end in general so you're noticing a lot more of that high end kind of uh, bass tone that's going on with the guitar and it's actually really it sounds really good it's the first time I've probably noticed the bass tone on this album and the bass actually sounds really good and it accompanies the uh, guitars perfectly and um, that leads me on to guitars because there's very little compression I am probably only fully hearing uh, the guitars properly for the first time after listening to this vinyl it's incredible the way the guitars sound on this uh, I listened to it through my uh, vinyl player speakers and through headphones and on headphones it's so crisp and clear that it, it, it nearly reminds me of the first Bless the Fall album if anyone remembers that I mean that's another uh, extremely iconic post hardcore album but of course it, it has that thing where it's like you're hearing this super heavy rhythm guitar and then on the other side you're hearing this lead guitar constantly it's also the most I've ever enjoyed Jackie Vincent's solo work because Jackie's fine uh, he has incredible technique he plays extremely clean he's a great guitarist but I just don't like the way he sounds like he is just a synth doing an arpeggio just but on the vinyl because there's a lot less compression there's a lot less uh, going on with that it's just you're able to hear him almost picking every string and it sounds like an actual guitarist playing. It's probably the most I've enjoyed Jackie Vincent playing. Of course, he's an incredible guitar player, but when it comes to writing solos, I'm just not so into him. But if there's any way for me to enjoy him playing a guitar solo, it's on the vinyl. Now, the vocals are the most drastic change for me. Um. They're full of all that emotional Ronnie Radke goodness, but there's a few sections in it where this kind of vibrato thing happens uh, on the album. Like, say, when um, he's holding a note, but there's no other instruments playing. It's like a break in the instruments, but Ronnie sings something. I don't know if they used autotune on the album. It's a post-hardcore album, so they probably did, but I don't know. Um, but if they did, it might be a case that the vinyl, obviously, is a piece of hardware. Um, it's not a software that can uh, render that stuff so if it there does happen to be auto-tune on it and the vinyl has been pressed with that auto-tune on it maybe the vinyl just like is shaking weird or something because it has this weird vibrato or tremolo effect going on again I don't know it might have just been like I got a bad press again like the side of the vinyl being sharp I could have just gotten like something that should have been B stock which is okay but and the whole vibrato-y thing with Ronnie's voice is not entirely off-putting. It only happens like once or twice throughout the whole album. Um, and it is happening in the same place each time. So I know it's not just like a random thing that happens sometimes. Uh, it's definitely uh, on this album I've heard that happening. Also, like the other instruments, there's a lot more clarity and, and you can like hear his voice a lot more. As though he was almost in the room with you. Um, Falling Universe have always had huge vocal production and it's very difficult to uh, explain uh, the way that Ronnie produces himself and the way he gets produced by other people in order to get those results and those vocal tones, I mean, because they're just incredible. It's, it's impossible to come out with some of the stuff that Ronnie does without being a, a production genius. But one of the things about that is when you're listening to a song like The Westerner, you can really, really hear that Ronnie is straining his voice. And for those of you that don't know, this album was recorded like a month after he got out of prison. He was not able to practice singing while he was in prison, so after two years of not singing, he had to relearn how to do everything. So this could be a case of either Westerner was recorded first, like right when he was still learning how to do it, or it was recorded last after he had like, you know, pushed his voice to the limit. 
Another one of the things that I noticed is his voice sounds lower. Um, not that he's singing lower, but you're hearing more of the low end in his voice, like a warmth. If you're listening to like the CD version or whatever, uh, you'll hear Ronnie singing actually, and it will kind of sound a little bit more nasally. He's always had like a, a, a real uh, chesty kind of voice, but he's never um, been like the way I heard him on this vinyl. You know, when you're listening to him, I thought that I was playing the vinyl at the wrong speed. Uh, and it turns out that no, that's just what he sounds like. And after listening to it one or two times, I'm like, you know, it sounds more natural. It sounds like it's his natural voice. It sounds like that's what it is. So I don't know what way to describe it, but it just sounds like his voice and all the vocal performances are more natural and maybe they did less processing on it, maybe they went back and found all the old tracks and processed them differently and made them sound the way that they do now, or it could just be the fact that it's on vinyl, but either way it just sounds really nice and refreshing to hear him this way after listening to Popular Monster about 2000 times in the last couple of months. When the album was announced, it was announced with bonus tracks. I wasn't sure if they were gonna make two new songs to put onto it, or if they had two songs like lying around. Like, it, it does, either way, it doesn't make sense because it's like, are you gonna uh, write two new songs to put on your album that's 10 years old, or are you going to? all of a sudden dig up two songs that have existed for 10 years but you, they've never been good enough for you to put them on any album. Either way it doesn't make sense, but it does sound to me like two songs that were written and recorded while they were recording the rest of uh, The Drug and Me Is You. But the thing I'll say is, like, where, where, where have these songs been the whole time? Because they're good songs, they are good songs, um, I'll admit that. Um, if you're looking at, like, you know, Falling in Reverse's uh, bonus tracks in general, they're kind of up there. They're not the best Falling in Reverse songs you've ever heard, but if you're comparing them to other bonus tracks, hell yeah, these are better than uh, a lot of the other bonus tracks that you'll hear. Uh, the only other one that I would listen to aside from these two is probably My Apocalypse 2. The rest of the bonus tracks on any other fa uh, Falling in Reverse album I don't think I would listen to, but I would listen to these two. I'll just mention real quick, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Where is it? Oh, so I was, one of them is called There's Something Else. I imagine it was cut from the album because there's this auto tune -y part at the start of it that sounds really electronic and it's a lot of the stuff that Ronnie would explore in Fashionably Late. Uh, and I think that it might have been cut because the record company didn't know if people would want to listen to that and they only allowed Ronnie to explore that whole uh, sonic area after the drug and you became so popular but by that point Ronnie had probably moved on from what your something else was and just didn't see any use for it so I'm guessing that's why we haven't heard it until now but uh, it's actually it's a good song it's 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 kind of like a bog standard falling in reverse song uh, but it's super catchy it's really catchy it's got like all those trademark falling in reverse isms that you can imagine and even though I've only heard it twice I know the entire chorus in my head. I've only heard it twice and I, I can remember the whole chorus because that's just it's catchy it's a good song it's not amazing but it's good I like it. I'm Not A Hero is a, is a different one it's it's kind of got like this nearly burlesque kind of feel with like heavy guitars playing and it kind of reminds me of like Get Scared or Golden Age of Grotesque by Marilyn Manson um, just those albums with like the heavy guitars but it's got that like pumping kind of rhythm to it and the one main difference of course being Ronnie's vocals um, he holds the notes a lot like Ronnie's always like rapping or he's singing very fast or he's saying a lot of words and to make one point but in I'm Not A Hero he's really holding out a lot of his notes uh, which is different for him, but it really it, it shows a lot of the emotion that he's doing as well because he, he has a lot of emotion in his voice, but this song uh, shows that a lot. But yeah, it's a great sounding song. I imagine it was cut because the chorus sounds a whole lot like Sink or Swim. Uh, in the same way that Prey, one of the bonus tracks off Just Like You, the chorus sounds exactly like Chemical Prisoner. 
So I'd imagine it was kind of like an A-B situation where they took two versions of the same song and they just said, well, which one do you prefer? And, um, you know, I, I think that they are different enough songs that if Ronnie had just sang a different vocal melody over the chorus, I wouldn't have even noticed it was similar to Sink or Swim. When it comes to the overall sound, I doubted that they would have all of the tracks to redo the whole album. Uh, when I was ordering it, I figured it would just be a new master. It was pointed out to me though that Falling in Reverse are one of the biggest bands on Epitaph. I mean, 18,000 units in the first week of sales is big, so they must have held on to it. And Bring the Horizon stopped being signed to Epitaph in like 2014, 2015, something like that. Uh, you have other bands like Parkway Drive, but they're on the whole other end of the spectrum when it comes to the sound. You know, so when it comes to like mainstream sounding bands, Falling in Reverse really are their biggest act, if you think about it. Um, so it made sense that they would have all of the tracks kind of like kept, you know, in a vault somewhere just in case they needed to do something with it, as well as the master tracks. It just makes me feel like everything was redone. It could just be that it's just on vinyl, but they just remastered it. Could be all they did, but it just sounds to me like they just did what they could with the sound and it sounds really really good it does sound really good again I'm biased because it's a badass album to begin with I love Falling in Reverse I love their new stuff their old stuff I've been jamming on their newest singles for years the actual music is it has always spoken for itself I mean the reason that this vinyl is in my hand is because it went gold. And it deserves going gold. It deserves to have gotten an achievement that a lot of uh, albums don't get these days. So, I'm proud of them and I'm glad to have owned this and added it to my collection. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can like and subscribe. And if you feel like commenting down below about an album that you would like to see re-released or an underrated album that you feel deserves a little bit more recognition, just say it down below and I'll be happy to see any of your suggestions. Thanks again and I'll talk to you later.